The new message has arrived. All right. Just gonna sit here and chill out for a second, see if anybody comes in here, cause uh, I know most people are out trying to run them daylight hours, so. Or maybe nobody's gonna come in here, I guess we'll see. I just need one person. Just one person come in. Rusty, I hear you're down in, uh, do you find something to do down in uh, Fort Worth, Texas? All right, Slime Pack, Justin, Dick. I'm out here in uh, Christiana, Tennessee, I-24 exit 89 so there's a loves on one side of the street what's up 10 count and then there's this shell station on the other side of the street uh went over there to my look or to the loves and got some reefer fuel and then uh came over here i'm trying to get a 34 in uh pick up at the back end of this window i have a low going to georgia and if there's a state i really don't like going to at least down near atlanta that is it um, so I got a load dropping off there. So I pick up my windows between 8 p.m. tomorrow and, uh, midnight. So my hours come back at 2300 tomorrow. I'm, let me see. I'm, north on Miller Road in I'm nine miles away. I cannot stand them potatoes, especially if they're not boxed. And depending on where they're going, uh, getting a washout on that is a mother. Slime Pack is in Macon, Georgia, headed back to Florida. Hey, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Deadhead from Georgia to Indiana. I'm not sure I would. I would might have to question that one. Because you can't tell me there's not anything between Georgia and Indiana. But I don't, you know, don't know. Uh, Bree, am I, you know what? I'm, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with Bree. I got out of all them Facebook posts, but I think technically she's a good driver. She might have just... Uh, Put herself on the radar just a little bit too much. Victoria, Texas. Hey, I love running down in Texas. As a matter of fact, one of my drivers headed down to Laredo right now. Okay, Eduardo asked me what I am tired of. Okay, so let's talk about it. It's not good. First of all, you can tell how long I've been out by looking at my hair, right? But when you're in my position, you don't go home when you want to go home. You go home when you can go home. So uh, here they're supposed to be getting some snow. You might want to... Colorado from Utah. Hey, you might want to uh, double check them. Uh, you know, double check the uh, weather. I hear they're supposed to get hammered again. I didn't talk to my wife about it today. So maybe I need to call her and see what's up with that. But uh, what's up? Hi, Eli. So anyway, definitely would not think about taking I-70 across, but every now and then you could skip through there without, you know, being hit, but it's unpredictable up there. All right, so what am I tired of? Man, I am tired of this damn winter. I just got out of the Northeast. I was way up there by the Pilgrims and all that shit up in Maine and uh, had to pick up a load in Vermont, right? Uh... I had to pick up a load. It wasn't St. Albans, but it was something that was going to go to uh it was going to go to uh Ben and Jerry. So, picked up that load dead headed 180 miles and that shit was slick 
as hell going out there in the morning. Uh, so I picked up that load, 180 dead mile, deadhead miles, 22 miles loaded, dropped that off. And then there was another load picking up at Chobani that next day going to uh, Covington, Tennessee. Covington, Tennessee has the best cold storage I've ever been to. Now, there's a lot of cold storages that are okay. All right, I'm not going to be saying hi to everybody, but uh, all right, I'm going to do it one more time. What's up, R Robbie? What's up, Joseph? So, delivered that load, but it was like ice and snow all the way from Maine to basically Cleveland, Ohio. Then it kind of got better. And then I was going to try to get to the terminal to get some more... Uh, steer tires but i went ahead and got those at loves and i was gonna pay cash but i was like you know let me i got with my road assist person and i was like you know can i use prime's discount and pay cash she was like yeah use this referral code so did that man the discount is only like 30 goddamn dollars so i would have been better off just paying cash but uh so anyway i got those Put on and then delivered this morning and then I have a load picking up in Murfreesboro going down to uh, Atlanta right before you get to the 285 on 75 I believe so anyway this winter has been demoralizing you know it's been just like one of these winters that never seems like it's gonna give up you know I was driving from uh, I picked up in St. Albans and then uh, headed out. It started snowing. It looked like it might pass by, so I had time on the load. I was like, all right, let me stop at Waterloo, New York. So I did that. Next morning I woke up. It wasn't really snowing, but it was kind of cold, and the highway kind of had that super thin layer of ice on it. And then it started snowing, and I think I'd left at about 11 p.m. Man, it was, them snowflakes were so big, I felt like I was flying the Millennium Falcon uh, down the highway so I stopped right before you got into uh, there's a loves that there I don't remember where it was but I was almost about to just shut it down there not because it was not drivable I am just getting tired of all this damn snow but I decided you know what Cleveland you know looking at the radar is probably gonna get better around then so I decided to thug it out and then uh, stopped at one of my sheets on I-271 just before you get into Louisville and all that. So anyway, delivered this load today, went to this cold storage, and man, I'm telling you, they had this big old freezer with all this ice cream and stuff in there. And they are just like, take whatever you want. But I only took like, you know, they had some Ben and Jerry's, but they had some other stuff. Let me see. I did kill this, but they had that. So I got one of those and uh delicious. So that's it. I'm just waiting for this winter to be over. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for me just trying to escape a little bit of this winter, I really don't like this Georgia load, but it just buys me a few days a few days to even get back into areas where there's going to be snow like that why is there always issues with trainers and trainees in this business seems like there's always contention well here's the thing is that just like leasing you almost in leasing i think if you were to take a look at most people that lease in the trucking industry mm -hmm. especially the brand new people they're almost like accidental business people. You know, they do it because, you know, not because they really want to, but because they feel like that's the best route to go. I think a lot of people that were trainers, a trainer is basically a manager. And I think that you get a lot of people training that have no skills in that. And either they think that the way to train, you know, I came out of the Marine Corps, you know, I, you know, back in the 90s, early 91, I got out, you know, there is a place for that kind of leadership, but that has to be the uh, culture. And I don't think that a lot of 
people like the way these trainers are kind of giving them this my way or the highway or yelling at them and all that kind of stuff and that's one thing I could really say is you know I've, I've gone out of my way to not yell at people or anything like that and uh, you know tried to make them feel like they're part of the process you know give them their own you know fuel rewards card let them get their own points let them get their own showers I'm not gonna be trying to get all the points and be like the person that's dictating when we're getting showers and all that shit what I did was said hey if there's a if there's a fuel stop on your route you get fuel use your shit you're gonna get your own shower stop when you want to stop and get a shower if you need help backing in or whatever but that stops a lot of the confrontation right there because you can't say to me we don't ever stop for showers because that's not on me I mean there are times when I might say okay I'm gonna stop and get a shower if you want a shower but uh, you know that's uh, basically up to them if I pick up Red Bull in Arizona they give you a free I hate Red Bull yeah that stuff tastes like shit what's up Everett misfit flat better just talk to uh, somebody somebody that you admit that is uh, in training right now he has trucking experience I think he met you in the Salt Lake City yard he wanted to switch to reefer and they would not allow him so uh, go figure I don't know about that um, so anyway that's part of the conflict you have a lot of people that that aren't management material that are basically asked to manage And you have, uh, you know, some people that, well, I think you have some people that shouldn't be trained in anyway. Some of the criteria on training would be like, you have to have fuel economy of this much. That really shouldn't even play a part in it. You know, you have to have this kind of fuel economy. Well, one thing I can tell you is this truck that I have right now does not get the same fuel economy as my other trucks. So if I wanted to train and they're like, well, you're, you know, you need to bring your fuel economy up. Well, that doesn't make sense. Some of the stuff just doesn't make sense. I think the priority shouldn't be on stuff like that. The priority should be finding people that respect their students and uh, actually care to train somebody, not what their fuel economy is. You know, logs, I can understand because you need to pass at least as much of that off as you can as possible and uh critical events on time all that you know but the fuel thing makes absolutely no sense anyway that was a rant that went far outside the scope of what you were asking um okay chris called me and asked me to become a trainer i asked will prime cover damages if the student wrecks my truck of course he said no you know, I've been lucky with that. I've known a few, at least three trainers that, well, here's here's the good one here. So I know a trainer who's training jack up the truck. The truck was down for a little bit, had to go to the shop. So the trainer's paying the trainee the whole time. And then the trainee tries to get an attitude when they're trying to, uh, when basically it was, He's going to share a, a, a hotel room with the uh, student. So, you know, when I came through training, we were double bunked up in them hotels. So if, if, we, if we're close enough to live in this truck, we're close enough to live in hotel rooms together as well. Uh, yeah, I haven't even looked at mine. I just know that this truck here has been right at or below the fleet average and I don't drive this truck any different than either of the other two trucks that I've driven or three trucks that I've or let's talk about the ones I have let's say the two trucks that I have the 24 and the 22 uh, much better fuel economy so the net fuel cost is gonna be less um, I don't think I've seen maximum overdrive 
so those are just things that some of the things that you know I just don't think really makes that much sense so that's my thoughts on the, some of that training stuff but uh, this winter is absolutely demoralizing but they you know I did a live earlier they have a good truck stop up there in Lewiston Maine there's a Circle K up there definitely got to check that place out uh, somebody had asked me about finding some of these truck stops that I stop at and basically all I do is use trucker path when I start my shift I look at kind of where I think I'm gonna end up and I look like 50 miles before 50 miles after and kind of pick some uh, a few places that I might think about stopping at sometimes I will shut down early if I'm going through like Manuka uh, Morris Illinois or whatever depending on the time of day if that naf naf is open at that loves I will probably stop there if I'll either wake up after my shift or whatever and the place be open does anyone ever bother me at the truck stops while you're trying to chill in the truck the further south I go the more it happens but it's you know sometimes you'll have just people that you know might recognize me but when you're in the south there's people out there with every single hustle in the world trying to get sell you shit you know scam shit from you or whatever and uh so that's a southern thing right there what's up carlos in south florida wonderful horseshoe what's up i'm chilling right now chops i don't have no rant for the day other than i am tired of this goddamn winter this winter I was driving just the other day and I was just about to just shut it down you know I had time on the load and I was just about to stop just because I'm tired of it uh, yeah I can't do the beard I start getting all itchy and stuff hey I'm glad I wish the winter would be tired of me but every I've, I've just seems like I've been stuck in winter Man, here's my haircut, Eduardo. When I go home, right before I leave out, I just shave it all off. And then it grows until I go back home, and then I shave it off. I'm not out here worried about what anybody's thinking I'm looking like at a truck stop. So I just while out while I'm out here. Uh, hello, Hat Maddie. You know, I talked to JJ the trucker about four months ago. I see that he just posted a video uh, talking about his sciatica or whatever, but I, I haven't talked to him. I need to talk to him. Uh, if you can't tell the difference between tumbleweed and a deer, you might have to knock out another 30,000 miles on your trainer's truck. Just joking. Uh, the dude had 40 pounds of ham left in his trailer. Been eating like shit for a week. Man, the last time I had, I went to the most, this is the worst place. Well, it's not the worst place. There's a Piggly Wiggly in uh, what's the name of that place Wisconsin or Milwaukee and I had probably about seven hams left on my trailer and I was handing out hams like I was Nino Brown and uh, yeah like I was Nino Brown I'm not sure I'm much uh, for that 2024 situation, but good luck. Matthew, how have I been doing? I'm tired for this winter to be over. That's about it. That's what I'm, 
That's why I said I was tired of this. Eduardo, what's my opinion on multi-level marketing, things like Herbalife and Kirby Vacuums? I don't, yeah, New Jack City. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's the best business plan unless you are one hell of a salesperson that could talk people into doing shit that's really not going to help them out that much from what I've seen. Oh, okay, let's talk about that. Okay, because I do have a little bit of, uh, experience with that just a little bit of multi-level marketing stuff so back in probably 1980 or no 1991 i was in san diego selling cars that drew ford right after i got out of the marines and i'd sold a car to this lady that sold mary Kay cosmetics and you know usually if, if you're in like a sales business and somebody else is doing something if you've made enough profit to warrant it then maybe you try to you know help them out with their stuff no i don't want trump to win so uh i'm from denver so i was like all right let me get into this uh mary Kay stuff so i i think it costs like 300 dollars to buy the kit and do all this stuff so you know i I knew a bunch of women at the time, so I sold enough stuff to kind of break even and uh, get out of it. But, man, they were out there trying to be too serious about that stuff. Uh, but I couldn't see. I mean, they're, the people that make a lot of money on that make a lot of money, but the people that don't, don't. And they were asking too much of, of somebody How do I feel about the U.S. Army on the Russian border? You know, I don't even—I don't know much about that right now. I just don't think Trump's a good person in general. So that's the first thing. I mean, he could have the best policy in the world, and I just don't—I just don't think he's a guy. I, 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 I just there's no need to go much further on that. Uh, Bishop must be thinking about somebody else taking a shit in a urinal. So anyway, I did that and uh, I got a good... I almost felt like I was in a Scientology cult. Because I went to one of them meetings because this lady was like, you know, you got to meet this guy. He's like the one of the top sellers in the country and he's going to be here for this event. So I went to this thing and I mean, it was like ridiculous. Uh way more than like some little side hustle or something like that uh, it's not just my feelings yo so uh, I don't think the policy is all that great for everybody you know if you've been doing taxes at least you know I can only speak for myself my taxes are nowhere near have as many write-offs as I would have had before that last change came through but like I said I don't here's one thing I don't I don't do is I don't necessarily vote for what is right for me because there's a lot of people that say I'm a Republican. I'm a Republican. Truck drivers are perfect at this. I'm a I'm a Republican. All this kind of stuff. And then it's like, you know, we want to uh, put caps on broker fees. We want regulation. We want this. We want that. You know, I'm more of a Republican. Than most of the fucking re people that are calling themselves Republicans. And really. The only reason I'm calling myself that, because I really wouldn't necessarily call myself that, but the division is so great. So if I gotta, I'm really in the middle. But if you're gonna tell me to take side, you know, take sides, and I just got, you know, these choices, then, you know, that's the way I gotta go. Now, if things were a little bit closer together that like they used to be, you know, then that's a different story. But anybody telling you they want broker transparency or they want regulation or anything like that that is not a republican trait so me i'm saying you know what the market will figure itself out that is a republican trait so 
But I listen, I have friends of all different persuasions. I mean, you know, you know, my best friend that I grew up with that I'm probably closer to than just about anybody on here to anybody, any of their friends I've known since 1977, he's a Republican now. He didn't necessarily, you know, go along those lines in this last uh, two, two elections, but, you know, I know people, as a matter of fact, on here that are serious Republicans that I've seen that I know and I coexist with them so it's never a personal thing and I would never really make it a personal thing so emotions is what most people have on either side I'm you know my sister died and and that really changed it because before I could see getting all upset about who gets president or you know this or that and after that I was just like life is too short to be uh, life is too short to like be, get upset about every fucking thing like everything that happens every single day And that's my thoughts on it. So popular, unpopular, you know, at 55 years old, I can honestly say I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about, you know, where I'm at on that or, you know, if they're like, you know, because there was a time, you know, I, some there was some channel and some, you know, and people were just like, I'm going to unsubscribe. Well, you know, I I wouldn't really care about that. Anyway. But really what I like more than anything is good people. Now, one thing that I have come in this last thing I'm going to say about this politics shit. Uh, well, actually. You know, everybody, and this is on both sides of the political spectrum, but there's people that are like questioning our decision to fuck around with Ukraine and all this kind of stuff or any of these things, you know, I'm not as much of a history buff as Tim Travels, but I was watching a documentary about the uh, independence war and had France not got into that on the United States side, we'd probably be talking with a little bit of a British accent. So somebody you know they saved us just like you know we might be helping uh ukraine and all that so uh, there's that whole time when people are like i don't call them french fries i call them freedom fries you know what you wouldn't be having none of them fries if it wasn't for france coming in and helping us against britain back in the day so uh there's that Uh, how is trucking with a big ass winner you have doesn't touch the steering wheel and make you go into other lanes? I don't know what that means. Do you like God? If I really believed it, I might, but I like science. Just took a shower. Uh, yesterday evening. Do not tell me it's about to start fucking rainy. At least it's rain. Alright, well, here we go on that.
Okay, Eduardo, those are legit points on history. You know, that's some good shit. I'm telling you, I was looking at, you know, the last stuff that I watched on history was uh, the bloodiest battles in the Civil War. I watched uh, these are the last few things I watched on history. So it was that. Um, the Independence War, uh, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and then uh, Teddy Roosevelt and Theodore Roosevelt were like uh, the last few things I've watched in terms of history. Well, here's the deal. Blaze it 505. If you're a history buff, we wouldn't be sitting here like the United States doing this because listen, France was in some big trouble. That king almost got kicked out for the money he was sending uh, to the war uh, when we were going through that, that with Britain. So I guess it's I guess if if it works out for us, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad Jesus loves me. And listen, Blaze it, I've probably spent more time in church between the ages of nine and twelve than you've probably spent in your life. Did I get a real job? You know, not yet. So, and almost every little bullshit war that we've got into, think of the wars that we got into, you know, uh, I don't even want to get into this, Vietnam, wasteful war, Afghanistan, possibly, Iraq, never even needed to, anybody to be in Iraq, that was some bullshit right there, so if we're talking about all the money that we're spending on Ukraine that actually is probably going to, would have, have they, should they win, have a larger impact on us uh, than what the Afghanistan Iraq war and all that kind of stuff Vietnam uh, would have and don't get it twisted I don't know what the financials are in this war but Britain just got done paying off their the debt that they owed us for helping them in World War two I don't it's been within the last 10 years so it's not like free money so I think some people just need to like, instead of knee jerk reaction and try and talk shit, should actually kind of look stuff up a little bit and understand more what they're talking about. And on the wars and stuff, I've scratched the surface uh, just a tad bit. I, I really don't concern myself with that. But those debts usually do come due. What's up, Riches River Smokers? I'm out here. Uh... Christiana, Tennessee, nine miles from my pickup tomorrow. And I'm trying to get a 34 in. Not that it matters. I don't mind running on low hours, but I'm in Georgia. I'd rather have a lot of hours to get the fuck out of there. So if I was like in Minnesota, Illinois, something like that, I probably wouldn't have been concerning myself with getting a 34, even if I had the time. Oh, I'll tell you another thing, and so I'm out here picking up a trailer. Where was that at? Or at least what type of load was it? I was picking up at, in Dodge City, so you can imagine where I'm at. Now, you know, you got to pick up your trailer and do all that kind of stuff. Those trailers aren't super tight as tight as they are in liberal Kansas but uh, misfit flat better told me that liberal the meat plant is on fire right now but anyway trailers are close to each other and uh, some jack off from another company I'm between the trailers comes and like slams into the back of his other, you know the trailer next to me because that's his trailer and uh you can't always expect those trailers to just go directly back. 
you know, you got to have some etiquette out here to some degree. Wait till the motherfuckers from in between the trailers. I wouldn't mind headed to, headed to Alabama. I just don't really... The places that I've picked up in Alabama are not the best places I've, I've been to pick up. Yeah, I, I haven't looked it up on the news yet. I'm going to do that as soon as I get off of here. But, you know, apparently there's flames coming out of the top of the building. So, uh, uh, am I leased with anyone? I'm just with Prime. So I'm under their authority and all that kind of stuff. Dad, why'd you leave me? Man, I just didn't think you were going to amount to much. Did you prove me wrong? Uh, as a driver, owner, ops, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Man, I can't do all that, Scott. I don't even... That's a lot of work right now to figure all that out. But it looked like this rain stopped. I haven't had a chance to look at this forecast, but. Uh, you know, usually my farts don't come out wet because I'm not trying to go with much velocity on those. I was just in Springfield yesterday, purchased a 21 Cascadia from Pedigree. Good deal. I don't know if this is a question for me. Same thing. How, brother, as a driver, can you walk away with no penalties? Yes, you can walk away with no penalties, but you have to remember that every truck that I have, I've put some kind of money down on. So might there be a time to walk away? Possibly. Uh, maybe on two of them, depending on how things go. But you, know, you got to think 15 grand or 14 grand on this one. 12 grand on the other one, 11 grand on the other one, and 10 grand on the other one. So uh, this one's paid off. The other one's going to be paid off in like seven, eight months. Uh, and I am married. Four twenty nine k. I got about 460 on this one here. Should have been less, but I trained in this one. One student. I trained one student. Uh, my other driver trained a student. Then I teamed with somebody for a little bit. Are things really bad out there? I have a truck paid off wanting to lease with JB or Landstar. I heard JB is having problems. Uh, I've heard they cut down their pay for independent contractors. I'm not exactly sure how they get paid or what that was, but I did just see a video on that. And as far as how much money you can bring home, it's hard for, I can't give that advice uh, because my picture is a little bit bigger than that right now in terms of it. I just don't get what's from this truck. I have to take into account what everybody else is doing. I'm all about taking off the governor. Miss Fit Flat Better 565K on her 21. She's kind of had a little rough year, uh, like me as well last year. She's had some truck issues. Some that were definite truck issues, and some were mechanics issues. Now I haven't looked into this yet or anything. I'm I wouldn't, you know, but between JB Hunt and Landstar, I'd probably be looking Landstar if I was going to be looking at either of those. Uh, 
from what I've been seeing. Okay, so it's intermodal. So, hey, and I've heard that our intermodal, you know, my last student, uh, he runs intermodal out of uh, Memphis and Nashville area, stuff like that. And things are, let's just put it this way. I'm not, I don't know enough to speak on it. Things have changed uh, with that as well. So, he's thinking about moving down to Texas and doing intermodal out there. Um, I've heard, I haven't heard good or bad about Mercer. So that's pretty much kind of pretty much kind of it, you know. I'm I've, like I said, I pick up tomorrow between eight and midnight. There's really no reason to even get there at midnight because my drop off is 200 miles away, you know. So, oh, uh, you know, let's so let's say four and a half hours to get there and I don't deliver. Hold on, let me take a look. Now I'm getting mixed up. All right, so I can pick up anytime tomorrow between 8 and midnight and I don't deliver until the next day at 1930 so 730 so if I pick up at midnight I'm gonna get there at four in the morning which is just the time you know the Sun's coming out later now with this time change so I'm not even joking about people not wanting to drive in the darkness I mean these truck stops are staying like packed later in the morning and then in the evening there's a there's a you know they're not getting packed quite as full I don't get it but so I don't want to get out to uh, that area I'll probably stop about 50 miles away I don't know I'll take a look at my stuff tomorrow but I don't want to come into a truck stop at 4 in the morning and have a bunch of people sitting there just waiting for the Sun to come up so I'll probably pick up the load chill out there for a couple hours and then head out maybe get out there at like six in the morning something like that yeah I haven't done any looking or I haven't done any research on any other trucking companies or anything like that but um, You know, I, I was listening to, well, first of all, it was brought to my attention uh, this morning about some stuff that was said in the meeting today about having paid off trucks. And I don't know if they just want people to pay off trucks. It's almost like you're asking people to pay off trucks and leave than you are anything because you ain't helping with the sales anymore. So before you used to be able to be done with your truck, throw it over to Pedigree, and then they could sell it for you. But now you ain't getting none of that assistance. And they're oh yeah, uh, you know we like to have new trucks in our fleet and this and that and that. Well, I mean I don't know if the business plan is to get as many people that want to uh, lease purchase trucks to go do that and get their experience and leave, or what the situation is, but doesn't seem like it makes that much sense to people so I'm not sure that that's the route if I was just gonna be a one truck person I'm not sure that's the route I would go yeah I don't know anything about SFI payments the one thing I could say good about 
the prime lease purchase is, you know, while the payment, and I don't even know what the payments are on all these different trucks, you know, uh, but they're just paid off so fast, you know what I mean? Like three years, boom, and you're done. So that's one thing I can say. No balloon payments, none of that stuff. And I'm not exactly sure what that comment is. But let me see if I can turn this. I don't know if I can turn this camera around to let you know. Man, the truck stop I stopped at yesterday, that's where I should have done this live from. But it was just too hot out there at the time. That place, if you've ever been on I-40, exit 101, it's called the 101 truck stop. That place, man, that that place might have been even a little bit rustic for me. Let me see. This place here is kind of... Here, let me take it off. See, this is kind of what this truck stops about right here. Quiet place at night. Not a bunch of traffic like if, if you're at a Loves or anything like that. Man, Rich, you never know if they're even going to have lease purchase trucks by the time you're ready the way they're talking right now. It almost seems like they are anti-lease purchase. And then I heard something from somebody else. Uh, I, was, I was talking to some other people yesterday. And I think they're going to stop people that have... Well, and this wouldn't necessarily apply to you at that point yet, but I think they're trying to keep it so um, we can't draw from prime company employees. So that's, you know, it doesn't seem like they're, uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're being that lease purchase friendly with some of the things that they're doing. But I did get get off the phone with my first uh, trainee, and for those of you guys that watch some of these videos, I did the worst repower in the history of man when I was in Chicago, and uh, come to find out that those two know each other, so glad to see he's doing well. You can pay it early. I think you could pay it off in 18 months or something like that. And to be honest with you, that's really about the point where, you know, that's really the point. 18 months is almost the point where if you gave it back, you really wouldn't have lost much on it in terms of equity or anything like that. Once you get a little bit past that, that's where you might be trading in, you know, like if you were to give it back you know, might end up costing you, but you could pay it off before that if you, you know, at 18 months, but that's pretty much the break even point where you're about worth what the truck is, or you owe about what the truck is worth anyway. All right. Anyway, I'm just wanted to come in here right quick. Uh, say what's up to everybody. Hopefully this winter gets done. I wish I was going down to Laredo, Texas. So, Donnell, if you happen to be watching this, I would trade places with you in a heartbeat. But uh, looks like it's just Atlanta, Georgia to me. Hopefully I could bounce in and bounce out because I cannot stand Atlanta. And the drop-off time is about the worst drop-off time ever. 7.30 p.m. 
in Atlanta. Uh, you didn't see the change. Man, that's, you know, sometimes there's going to be some certain changes. Sometimes they aren't. But, you know, if you listen to what he said, that was only, that wasn't going to be, he wasn't going to be involving himself in certain things. It doesn't matter. Whatever happens, happens. At this point, uh, all there has been in the last couple of years has changed. So, uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I think I'm going to run in and grab me something to eat. <coughs> I think I'm going to run in and grab me something to eat. So, let me make sure that, uh, when I do it, I don't have to worry about anybody running me over. You know what I'm saying? I'm just joking about that. Anyway, uh, yeah. Man, I'm not a huge, huge milk person. I mean, I'll drink it on occasion with something. But I saw a video when I was like in grade school of them milking cows. And I thought that was the nastiest shit like I've ever seen in my life. It looked like they were shitting and like the doing the milk, like the cows were getting milk and shitting and stuff of the same. It just looked, it horrified me. So that's about it. What else were? Let me think if there's anything else before I get off of here. Yeah, that's me. If you pulled in, where you at? Which truck? You the white Freightliner over there by that raggedy old white truck on the edge? Somebody said they just pulled into this truck stop. Man, I tell you, normally don't see a lot of prime people over here unless that's the last resort. Yeah, I did just see a prime truck pull in here, a white one. Hey, I'm going to tell you what, I haven't been in there yet, but this place has the bomb, well, you know what, cheesesteaks are good anyway, I don't think I've really had a bad cheesesteak, but they have ones that are in there, they're usually pre-made, but they're pretty good, so run in there and check that out while you're here. Hey, what brought you over to this truck stop instead of the Loves, because I was just at the Loves a little bit earlier getting some reefer fuel. And uh, it seemed like they had plenty of spots over there when I stopped over there. Had the PC over here because I had to get off duty as soon as possible. Um, there was this heavy haul jack off that wouldn't leave the fuel island. And I needed to be here by a certain time to get my 34 in. So uh, the showers weren't available at Love. So I PC'd over here to take a shower. Oh, that's a good quote there. Kill a FTP. All right, well, I'm about to get off of here and uh, come back here and take a nap here in a few. But, you know, I think I like, I like these lives a little bit better than just doing regular videos because sometimes I got more to say than just what's in that video. Uh, and I really haven't had any topics to speak on as of late. Man, JJR, I'm telling you, the best thing about these mom and pop places is the chance of you getting your shit tore up is minimized 
by probably 40% being at one of these places, especially the real nice ones like that sheet I was at the other day in Ohio. Man, you easily had like an extra four inches on your on your space and then just the way they're set up and stuff like that that loves across the street I you know it's not the worst but you know like these are all straight backs here pretty much and you have less people anyway just love them Hey, paying off a truck is good. Hopefully they let people keep them there a little bit. Uh, but that's definitely a good thing. All right, I think that's about it. All right, I'm about to get off here. I do appreciate you guys stopping in. Uh, hopefully everybody can stay out of the snow. Uh, what's up? Hug Spark two and sun gotten before i leave this one more thing i want to talk about does anybody actually believe that jake paul is gonna beat mike tyson man i've been watching them training videos for mike tyson man he damn near looks as good as he did when he was younger and i know he's not but really all it takes is just one of those little f flurries and i just think it's a wrap if they actually put that on a betting line in Vegas, I might actually need to try to put some money on that one. That right there. I mean, as big as Jake Paul's head is, that is like a big ass. His, he has a big ass head, boy. That is just, you know, I don't see how you could miss that. So anyway, I just wanted to see if anybody actually thought that because Jake Paul was younger. And you can't account for this. Old man strength. Anybody ever fuck around with their granddad? And now I'm probably up in that granddad age, but you start messing around with some of these old granddads and stuff. And, you know, sometimes, you know, there isn't such thing as, as old man strength, if you believe it or not. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to be out there doing a bunch of stuff or, you know, they're, you're, you know, but for a little short period of time, you know, that shit's real. And that's the only thing I'm worried about is that fight being fixed or being some kind of... I don't think Mike Tyson would play like that on this one. I think he actually feels a little disrespected uh, about it this time. So, hopefully that's the case. And I mean, it's not like Jake Paul isn't... No, like, he, he, you know, it's not like he... He can't fight. But I, uh, like, I've, you, you probably don't want to get in no fight with him or anything like that. And all the people he's boxed weren't really real boxers. Else they were, like, all old or something like that. Man. Anyway. Hey, JR, Google, Google old man strength. I, I, I haven't even done it, but I guarantee you if you Google old man strength, Something's going to come up about old people, you know, that term being used. So anyway, uh, man, his age doesn't seem to be getting to him in them training sessions, though. He is hitting them bags so hard. And who really needs to get the award is the guy standing in there with that little turtle shell and all that stuff, letting him hit him and swing near his face and everything. That's who needs to get an award. But anyway, that's about it. I'm about to, wait, I got 40 more seconds to go. Let me just get this to an even hour right quick. Just get there. So that's it. All right, everybody's thinking Tyson. I actually had some crazy ass people on Facebook thinking that Jake Paul was gonna win that shit. All right, well, I'm about to sign out. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I know Hippie Trucking Transportation is always comment, subscribe. I'm out.